Hey everyone, I'm Rachel and I have hamsters and today I'm gonna do a video about Hungry Hammies. She has a shop with lots of hamster toys and chew toys that I ordered quite a few of. This is one of her hanging Saturn toys and they come in a set of three and they're soaked in different flavors of fruit juice so um, they do have a slight flavor to them so your hamster will chew on it. Uh, these are the foraging pumpkins. I got two of them. I absolutely adore them. <laughs> I think I'm gonna buy more. I'm also hoping that maybe she'll make some in like different colors and shapes which would be really fun. But these are fabulous. I love them. I got these foraging acorns. These are like wooden acorns that are soaked in a juice also. And um, they're pretty big so your hamster should be able to get them in their pouch at all, so they shouldn't choke on them or anything, but um, a good chew toy and they look adorable. Come in that cute basket. And because it was, oh, I'm sorry, I missed one. This is one more chew toy that I got. I was just trying to get like a smattering of different things and textures. And then because it was Christmas, I got a few extra gifts. She sent me these puffed millets. Um, I have this adorable thank you card. Her packaging is fabulous and so is her website, so you should Definitely check it out. I will put links down below. Um, very sweet and personal. And then I got a tiny hat <laughs> that I, I have yet to, to successfully take a photo of on one of my hamsters. And then also this uh, snowflake chew toy that I think is probably um, juice soaked as well. And so you may have seen some of my other videos. I got this banana stand and I figured it would be handy to use with some of these hanging chew toys. Um, if You can always hang them from the lid of your enclosure, but this was just easy for me. And you know, if you have a dwarf hamster, this should work great. I'm not sure about Assyrians. Syrians might be a little bit big for this. They might climb on this and knock it over and get injured. So I wouldn't recommend it for a Syrian, but I think for a dwarf, this is pretty safe. I haven't had any issue with my hamsters. It's very stable and it makes it really easy for me to change out different chew toys and boredom breakers using that stand. Uh, so what I did was I took one of these Saturns and I filled it with some treats from Redwood Grove. I've been getting the Redwood Grove Spoiled Hammy Box, which I will do a video about. Um, I haven't been super great at recording everything, uh, but I have really enjoyed it. I actually got it as a gift for my birthday, which was in October, so my sister gave me October, November, and December of the Spoiled Hamster Box um, as a birthday gift, and it was fabulous. If you need a gift for someone with a hamster, I <laughs> highly recommend. Um, I have got to this point where like, I feel like I'm not sure what else to add to my hamsters and closures, but uh, I did want to experiment with different floral mixes or treats or, you know, boredom breakers. And the Redwood Grove box is like perfect for that. They give you a lot of different little, um, little different treats and hides and different things each month that really kind of help you explore outside of your boundaries and maybe um, try some new things that you wouldn't have even thought of trying. So I really, really loved it. Um, and what I did is I took some of those things, some pumpkin seeds that they gave me, some shelled pumpkin seeds, and also some uh, banana, I think I put some banana chips in there. I think it was the banana chips that really made Steven go after this. Okay, so they don't have to be like solidly in there, but just as long as they're kind of just barely there and then that way it'll get your hamster to have to work at it a little bit to get the treats. I think that's good enough. <laughs> or I decided that was good enough for me and it definitely still worked fine. So I left it that with a bunch of little treats kind of hanging on the edges there, if you can see that. Ready to go. I also had to make the the line a little bit shorter so it would hang on my banana stand without dragging on the ground, which I did. And then I put it in Steven's enclosure, so there it is. <laughs> I also gave him one of the foraging acorns. Doesn't it look adorable? <laughs> I love it, it's so cute. So if you haven't seen my setup before, this is just a brief little glimpse of it. 
Um, it has changed actually since this video, but I have or I had a 100 quart bin basically connected with a spiral tube <laughs> going into a 200 quart bin. I know it's a little crazy, but it works and it gives Steven a lot of space. And then that way I can put lots of bedding in the 200 quart bin, about seven to eight inches there. And then in the 100 quart bin, it was mostly a combination of hemp and coconut fiber so he could do some foraging. And here he is when he first discovered the little Saturn. <laughs> it's so cute. And he seemed to go for it right away. I was really happy to see that he seemed to enjoy this and this kept him entertained. I mean, this was a fairly long clip, so it, it worked, <laughs> which is all that I ask for, that it's uh, something that will entertain my hamsters and keep their minds engaged. Um, the one thing I will say I've found with my robos and my dwarves, they just don't seem to be big chewers. I've tried many things. It's actually why I purchased all these chew toys from Hungry Hammies as I was just trying one more time to see if I could get them to chew on any wooden or other items. Um, I just haven't had much luck with that. Um, I think this makes a great boredom breaker for sure. Uh, but chewing wise, maybe they chew on it a tiny bit, but but definitely um, when it comes to chewing, I find that whimsies work the best for my robos and dwarves. I think for Syrians, you'll have a lot more luck with chew toys. I think they tend to chew more. And of course, every hamster is different, so there's no you know, one size fits all. They all have a different reaction to things. Um, but yeah, I've just, I think I love everything here, but um, I haven't gotten luck seeing them chew on these or maybe if they do it I can't tell <laughs> so here is little Sophia checking out her foraging acorn for the first time um, you'll see she gives it a few sniffs she's definitely interested I didn't see uh, see her chewing it significantly um, but I still think it's adorable and I love it I mean I think it's important to provide different items for your hamsters to chew whether or not they take part in it you know, who knows, but their taste may change. You never know. So I'm still happy with it. And here's Steven, his first time with the foraging pumpkin. Uh, he was quite scared of this at first. I didn't expect this. You can see he's trying to figure out how to avoid it. Um, this is while I was sleeping. So unfortunately I wasn't there to help him, <laughs> but I did put seeds inside of it. So you can just kind of open up the sides and put seeds in. So I figured he would smell that and not be so afraid, but it took a little, a little bit of coaxing. I did put it near his door so he could smell it. You can see he, he did <laughs> come to terms with that. And then I moved it back to where it was and eventually he did figure out what the deal was and it um, has enjoyed it ever since. Um, I will say of the things I got in this box, I think these foraging pumpkins were my favorite. My hamsters seem to spend a lot of time with them. It's like a really easy boredom breaker from my end. I just stick seeds inside, but for my hamsters, it's, uh, it's a challenge that seems to be enjoyable and they do it for a long time. Um, it'll last for, you know, many, many minutes that they're rolling around with it. Uh, you can see Steve, Steven's about to give, um, give an attempt to get the seeds out. So I think if you're looking for like an easy boredom breaker, that's easy to continuously use. Like you can just keep refilling it. Um, and it's very little time on your part. I think this is a great, a great thing to buy. And the one thing I'm hoping, like I said, is that maybe she'll make some in some different colors. I'd love like a rainbow, <laughs> rainbows of pumpkins. I would love to have like a bunch of these and just have a little rainbow pumpkin patch year round in my hamster's cages. <laughs> um, maybe that's just me, but uh, I just love these things. And you can see Steven really, once he got over the fear, he was pretty into it.
And here is little Sophia. She got the memo right away, <laughs> um, but it, it worked great. Again, I love these things. I think this is a, a toy that could work with basically any hamster, Syrian, Robo, Dwarf. Um, I think I'm gonna buy a few more so that all my hamsters can have one at least. Um, it's just awesome. I love it. <laughs> All right, so this is Oscar. He is my newest little hamster. If you've watched my other videos, I got him from the Baldwin Park shelter in LA County. He was on the euthanization list. Um, this is him in an early setup in his 200 quart bin. I will do an updated bin setup now that I've got him a little more situated, but that's um, his more or less living situation. He's very, very shy, but getting better. And um, I gave him the longer chew toy because I just wanted to expose him to a bunch of different textures. And so you'll see him walk past it in a moment here. It's next to his whimsy. Um, I have not seen him chew on it much, but I keep it there just in case. But he definitely does chew on his whimsy, so at least he's chewing, <laughs> which is good. And you can see it here too. This is his initial 100 quart bin before I had a chance to get him in a 200 quart bin. Sometimes getting 200 quart bins can be a little bit challenging, but I did find one around Christmas time. They were in stock and <laughs> he's such a little cute thing. I am just so happy to have him in my hamster family and um, hoping to do a video more about him soon, but I wanted to get to know him first before I said too much, because I think you know that's part of the process. So. Hope to share that with you, but he does have that one chew from Hungry Hammies, and um, it looks really cute. And you know, hopefully, he enjoys it. I do plan on giving him one of the pumpkins as well in the future. I think he would really enjoy that. Okay, so I was basically done with this video and then I decided I have to try the little hat. <laughs> so this is Sophia in her playpen. Uh, she was not super into the hat. She's kind of one of those hamsters who if she doesn't like it, she'll just swat at it and bite it. <laughs> um, so then I tried Laverne while she was drinking water. I actually use the moments when Laverne drinks water to put medicine on her abscess. She's just so focused on drinking water that um, it seems to be a good moment. Uh, you know, every hamster is different, so this is just like Laverne's little moment of peace that I can, that she holds still long enough for me to put something on her. So I figured this is the perfect moment for the hat. Um, I would like to do another photo where maybe she's just sitting there if I can get her to wear it. I think she would be so cute because she has such a grumpy little face. <laughs> uh, so if I do manage that, I will post it on Instagram, and if you follow me, I'll link to it below. So. Um, yeah, you'll be the first to know. Here's little Steven. I gave him some eggs to distract him. Um, for Steven, I did actually put the hat on him. I figured if I touched him, he'd probably run away. He's eh, He has his moments of when we can touch him and when not, but I didn't want him to like run away while eating eggs. Um, I don't... I don't think he would choke, but I don't want to risk it. <laughs> and then here's Sophia again. I also gave her eggs to try to distract her um, so she wouldn't notice the hat hovering over her. Um, I love, it looks so cute on her. Um, little Sophie is so funny because she's just so small but is so confident and um, yeah, she, I, I, we joke that if someone were to break in, Sophia would be the one to defend us. <laughs> she's just like such a little attack hamster. Um, it's so silly because of how little she is, but yeah, she was not into it. <laughs> 
All right, so I'll leave you with this nice long clip of Stephen enjoying his foraging pumpkin. If you are interested in any of the items I showed you today or the website, I'm going to link to all of it down below and also her Instagram account. Um, she has some of the most photogenic hamsters on the internet, I think, so you should definitely follow her on Instagram. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for some hamster toys or something to engage your hamsters, I think her shop is full of really unique items that I really haven't seen other places. Um, when you think about foraging, you generally think about hamster flowers or sprays um, or sprinkling seeds, you know, across their bedding. Um, but uh, she makes a lot of these sort of puzzle toys that um, it seems like, you know, really engage my hamsters. And um, I mean, you can see how long this video goes on for. Um, I'm really happy with the quality and um, the amount of engagement my hamsters had with the items that I purchased. So I will definitely be shopping there again and I will let you guys know what I get. Um, but if you have gotten things from Hungry Hammies, please leave me a comment below. I'd love to know what you got and what your hamsters liked. I'm very curious if there's like some things Syrians like more than dwarf hamsters or vice versa. So um, yeah, let me know what your experience was and um, just interesting to find out. But anyway, I think, you know, it's so great to have these small businesses and keep them in business because they're really doing a service for us all. So let's remember to shop the little businesses that make our hamsters happy. And uh, thank you again for watching today's video and I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye.